on House of David, we learn about the Feast of Trumpets, or better known as Rosh Hashanah. This feast was given to the Jewish people as a prophetic event known to the church as the Rapture. Rabbi Gennady goes through the book of Leviticus to show us what this feast signifies and also what God wants every believer to know through the Feast of Trumpets. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Gennady Lifshitz. Now listen, so if the first four were, they were fulfilled and the next three are not, then the next we are waiting is for the trumpets. Okay, That will be when we're going to be raptured. And then we know that Jesus is coming and Israel shall be saved. That is an amazing, amazing event. So what is the last one? According to the Bible, according to God's calendar. Feast of Tabernacles. Every year Christians go into Israel to celebrate Feast of Tabernacles. And it's not the event just to celebrate. It's the event to expect. Because it's going to happen. What does it mean? Have you heard about the millennium with Christ? A thousand years? That's what exactly that is. <laughs> right after Israel, Israel is going to be saved. The next moment is the millennium with Christ. This is God's calendar. Isn't he precise? Oh, he is precise. <laughs> that is an amazing thing. Now, if somebody will tell me, That the rapture is not going to happen at the Feast of Tabernacles, but it's going to happen in December. I'll call you unbeliever because it doesn't say that way in the Bible. God cannot fulfill half of his calendar the way he said and another half the way somebody else say it. It has to be exactly at that time and exactly at that event as God has preset through the Bible. We don't know the year. We don't know the day. The Bible says we don't know the time, but we know the season. When is the season? When is the Feast of Trumpets, it's fall. It's the fall. I don't know what you want to believe, but looking into the scriptures, I believe, I, and I answer only for myself, but I believe this way, and I teach that way, the way I believe, that the rapture is going to come in the fall. Because there is no other indication for anything else. And do you know what? The millennium will start somewhere before winter, I would love that. Because I'll be living in Israel, I don't have to face Canada anymore. It's warmer there. Amen? And you know what? The Bible says that the nations will have to come and show up before, for the Feast of Tabernacles over there. So it'll be a good time for you guys to leave this country and go over there for the Feast of Tabernacles to warm up. And the Bible says if Egypt is not going to come and worship God, God will say no rain. I mean, whether we're going to take the Bible literally, the way it is, or just like a book of fairy tales. That's how it is. And if you want to ask yourself a question, whatever you think about rapture and this and that, we don't know the time. We don't know. Of course we don't. We must be ready. But you know what? You better be ready because... I feel somehow, somewhere, that we are not far from that point. From the time when God poured out His Spirit in the day of Pentecost, it was already over 2,000 years. And whatever you see in the world, according to the Word of God, we begin to see that we are very close to the event. Whether you're going to see it or not, now you understand. But listen, don't get an idea that if the rapture, as Rabbi says, is going to be in the fall, so springtime I could do whatever I want. And I'll repent in the summer. 
No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right? Don't do that. Because we don't know what year. <laughs> you see what I mean? We don't know what year. And God says, you be ready. You be ready all the time. You will be ready always. So when we celebrate these things, when we praise God for all things, as today we celebrate in the Feast of Trumpets, we give praise to God for the future event that is going to take place and if you are born again and saved, you are going to join that multitude of people to be ruptured and to be set free from this world for a while. Oh, what a wonderful thing it will be. That's why the church needs to hear these things. You see, the problem is with the church that a lot of times in the church, they forget to look into these feasts, and they don't want to celebrate. They said this is a Jewish feast. No, they are not. The Bible says these are, look, it says verse 23, chapter 23, verse 2. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feasts of the Lord, which you proclaim to the holy convocation, uh, shall, be, shall be the holy convocation. These are... What is it saying? No, not feast. Read, read, read. To be holy convocation, these are... Verse 2, verse 2, please read it with me. Uh, whose? These are my feasts. God's. You know why it's God's feast? Because that's his plan and that's his calendar. The church, unfortunately, we make ourselves our own calendar with Christmas and Easter and all kind of things, we make a lot of different calendars for ourselves. God doesn't really care because God does not follow our calendar. He follows his. Hello? Yeah, we, we, may, we may believe whatever we want according to the rapture. We may believe whatever we want according to about Israel and about millennium, but who cares? God says, that's my calendar and I'm not going to change it. Hallelujah. We could have 155 different interpretations. That's fine. Let them interpret. People have nothing to do. Let them do it. But the Bible is clear. Hello? The Bible is clear. It's here. Leviticus 23 is the guideline from the clock that when it begins to tick to the very end, to the millennium. In one chapter, God has portrayed everything from the beginning to the end, how he wants to redeem people and what's he wa what he wants to do with it. And nobody and nothing will change it. And you see, see, if I will be wrong and I'll stand before the Lord and says, why did you teach my people that the rapture will be in the Feast of Trumpets? said, Lord, what else? What else? If you do things according to the Bible, God will never ask you this question. You believe what the Bible says, whether it hurts him or not, whether it sounds like or not, as long as it is in the Word of God, you do exactly what the Bible says. And you believe exactly what the Bible says. You may have another hundred scholars trying to prove otherwise. But you know what Paul said? It says, even if angel from heaven will come and bring you another gospel, don't take it. Thank God for his instruction. Thank God for his word. Let people argue. Amen? Amen. That's why no Christmas here, no Easter, nor Twister. All right? We celebrate only the things what God says. By the way, I have a proof in a Bible when Jesus was born. Up to the exact month. It's in the Bible. And I have my teachings there in some DVDs. 
it's been proven that he never was born. He was never born in December. It has been proven according to Chronicles. And the book of Chronicles is the record of the things. It's there. But who wants to sit and research the book of Chronicles? The book of Chronicles, for some people, just like a telephone book. You know, have you ever opened the telephone book? And you be, is it boring? It's big like this, and it's just names and numbers. To some people, that's what the book of Chronicles. But if it's there, it's important. Amen. And there is proof. There is a proof that Jesus was not born in December. And it was never called Easter. It was a resurrection day. So if you want to please God, please him according to the word of God, please. He left the word of God for you and I to live by and to trust him and to talk to him. Can you imagine somebody throws to God, they say, God, God, happy Easter. Oh, my. The whole heaven just shut down. What is it? Or I say, God, Merry Christmas. What? But when you say happy Passover, God understands that language. Amen? I'm not trying to make fun of people, but that's the truth. That's the truth. We want revival. I want revival. Do you want revival? Well, I want revival. If you want revival, the Bible says you cannot please God without faith. How do you please God? According to his word. You agree with him. God doesn't have to come. God doesn't have to come in agreement with us. He came with his own agreement that we may be agree with. He says, you want life? Follow me. You want the truth? I'm the truth, the way, and the life. He says, me. It's right here. So my friends, remember that the Old Testament, as people call them, it's the testament, but it's also this information there. And it's only for the believers to understand. Everybody else, they're just using it for their own purposes. And when I study these things, I look through the eyes of God by the Spirit of the Lord and say, Lord, what are you going to tell me today? What am I learning? God says, look at this and be ready. Look at this and be ready. Look at this and be ready. Amen. And be ready. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to be deceived. We want to know the truth. And the truth will set us free. Hallelujah. Happy Yom Teruah. Feast of Trumpets. My God, would it be wonderful to be raptured today? But not yet. I didn't receive my pilot's license yet. I got to enjoy my flying yet. I got to go to the West and bring miracle meetings. I got some things to do within a couple of weeks. So it's all right. Like they say next year in Jerusalem, but I say maybe next year in heaven. How about that? I'd rather to be in heaven than in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is nice. It's good. But I'd rather to join heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. God, let us be biblical. Let us be biblical. Amen. Let us be biblical. Let us look into God's eyes and say, Lord, I want to know the truth. Amen. And not to create our own things. Let's walk according to the word of God and be free. Hallelujah. Father, I give you praise in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for today. I thank you, Lord God, that you are here. I thank you, Lord God, for revelations. I thank you, Lord God, for opening our eyes and understanding of your truth and the word, Father God. We trust in you. We praise you. We know, my Lord, that nothing will happen without your will 
you being in control and lord when you gave us this uh, calendar of yours it's going to be fulfilled exactly the way you have said it lord what you have done today is gave us another step ahead to be prepared and be ready to know that you are near to know that you are going to come and do your wonderful things i give you praise my lord i give you praise in jesus name can i ask you a question can you imagine if the apostles or the disciples of jesus had this revelation in the days of when jesus was with them when jesus told them you don't go anywhere from jerusalem but wait they say ah we know why we know why because of the day of pentecost that'll be fulfilled and they look say jesus it's 10 days that is left we know when it's going to happen it's only 10 days you see what i mean but they didn't know they didn't know that in 10 days after jesus is ascendant ascendant they will receive the gift of the holy spirit and it happened exactly at the day of pentecost and god did not miss a minute and a day to do it he done it exactly as the bible says when the day of pentecost have fully come you see my point see my point but after we have received the power of the holy spirit after we have received all the knowledge god has open our eyes to the word and he says i will lead you and guide you into all of my truth so that you may be ready that you will know so we cannot say we didn't know we know the spirit of god now shows us the truth amen isn't it wonderful isn't it wonderful to be um knowledgeable about the things of god to know and to expect glory to god let us praise him right now thank you father in jesus name we give you praise lord we don't want to be blind like cats walking around from place to place and wondering and thinking what's gonna lord my god we want to be ready we want to be ready inside of our life we want to be ready in our heart we want to walk according to your word and know exactly what you want to do my lord know exactly what how you want us to be ready know exactly what we need to know oh glory is god the devil is a lie he's trying to blind people he's trying to lie and 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 do all kind of things with people but praise god for his word that god is opening to us to understand his marvelous truth and be ready for it to be executed hallelujah blessed be your name lord blessed be your name we give you praise thank you lord thank you jesus when god is giving revelations when god is connecting us with his word it's a powerful thing it's a powerful thing you can check over and over again with the scriptures without being argumental much but you can check with scriptures over and over again the issue about israel the church the world god and yourself um we did receive some phone calls um, concerning what i said and uh, people still believe that um, um that the church is replaced has replaced israel no it, it never it, it'll never happen the church has become a spiritual israel but spiritual only they become to join the commonwealth of israel but they will never replace the physical israel they'll never replace physical israel jesus is coming back to jerusalem it's plainly there it's saying there so we don't have to read just one chapter in matthew or somewhere else we have to read everywhere and i would recommend you to read over and over again 11th chapter of the book of romans and as i said it's wonderful to re-study and teach our congregations and churches at least twice a year over and over again on romans 11 and you know what to my surprise Romans 11 haven't been taught much anywhere. 
It's just people that are open-hearted to the Jewish people, to the nation of Jewish people. They will go and dig and study because the whole chapter is pro-Israel. And that is wonderful. It's pro-Israel because God's heart is pro-Israel. He says, I'm zealous for Zion. I'm coming back to Zion. I will build my temple in Zechariah 6, it says, in Zion. And God is going to dwell out of Jerusalem, as the Bible says. Out of Jerusalem for a millennium. Not out of heaven, but out of literal Jerusalem. Because he's coming to save his people, Israel. And he's going to dwell there. So I would advise you to research your scriptures. I know you can scream and shout and, and be angry about it. But let me tell you, my friend, God's truth is always truth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never. Why don't you research the scriptures? Research the scriptures for your own sake so that you will believe what God said. Well, thank you so much for watching. And this week we were talking about the specific uh, high holiday, uh, the Feast of the Lord, but they're all over right now. And uh, the, the cycle of God's feasts are every year. And I'd like to encourage you to begin at least to think about them and maybe celebrate. Thank you so much. God bless you. Shalom to you. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jesus. All that is within me, Lord, bless your holy name. I live my life to worship you alone. You brought me out of darkness into your glorious light. Forever I will sing of your great love. Forever I will sing of your great love. I love to see you glorified, to see you lifted high. I earn to see the nations bow the knee. It's you alone, Lord Jesus, who can cause the coldest heart to find your love and everlasting peace. To find your love and everlasting peace. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy, holy.
praise you, Jesus, we worship you. will know that the time is finally come <laughs> the rapture hallelujah for your bride to take her place hallelujah and we'll hear the angels sing hallelujah oh, House of David Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.